Why is cancer becoming an epidemic today? If you look around, we have more fancy hospitals, we have doctors, we have nutritionists, we have gyms, we have superfoods, we have supplements, we have everything possible, but yet when you look at the statistics of sickness, we see that cancer is becoming more and more, not just in India, across the world, but right now, India is one of the leading countries when it comes to cancer. And something has to change, because the very fact is if we have so much for health care, why are people getting cancer and why are people getting sicker and sicker? So it's so easy for us to believe because of what the media makes us believe that there's pollution in the air, no doubt there is, then milk is contaminated, chicken is contaminated, fruits and vegetables are contaminated, all of that stuff, water is unhygienic, people who are fat, people who are obese, it's bad for their health, they have chances of getting diabetes, and we keep running from pillar to post, reacting to the disease. And today, what we've done is we've pulled up data of over a of hundreds and hundreds of cancer patients over the last one year. And we've looked for a commonality in the lifestyles of these people before they got cancer. It's very important that we invest in, invention, in prevention today because once we get the disease, many people heal. But what if we didn't get the disease? What if it was possible to prevent the disease? But you see, there is no research and there is no funding to fund research that goes into prevention because there's no money to be made in prevention. There are no profits to be made in prevention at all. Like they say, there's no money in being healthy and there's no money in being dead. All the money is in being chronically ill. And if you actually look at that today, all the money is in being chronically ill. And how many times you need to see your nutritionist or your doctors or be admitted to hospitals or undergo all these new screening processes that are so good at telling you what's wrong in your body, but there's not, no one telling you how to overcome everything besides just treating the symptom. So when we pulled up this data, it's unbelievable. And we have data from across the world because we don't just handle cancer patients across India. We look at people in Europe, from villages in Mexico to Russia to the United States, you name it. And we have patients from all of these places, including down under in Australia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Taiwan and Japan as well. But the beauty is when we pulled out this data, we would think, at least I would think a couple of years ago, that we would see cancer in patients who are obese. We would see cancer in patients who have exposure to chemicals and who have poor lifestyles who, and who are drinking and smoking all the time and all of that stuff. But you'll be very, very surprised at the commonalities that we have picked up when we look at the data of cancer. Today I have five commonalities and it will all make sense to you when you understand it. Today we're just going to discuss the commonalities and then we're going to break it down over the next couple of videos. Because if we can perfect at our, ourselves at closing the gap in these commonalities, believe me, we have a chance to prevent cancer and we have a chance to even heal cancer. Now the beauty of this is it requires lifestyle changes. Now don't get me wrong, there are cancers which are genetic in nature. There are cancers which are caused beyond our control. There are cancers in small populations where we don't know why it happened. That's a very small population. But the larger population which is caused by lifestyle and most doctors because we don't diagnose beyond the symptom so we never get into the lifestyle of people who have cancer to find out what the root causes what the trigger was so then we either say oh it was bad luck or it just happened or yep it's poor lifestyle but when you're looking at treating a multifactorial complicated disease you want to have all the data all the data for a right diagnosis to be made to help the client holistically number one Number one, the commonality that we've seen in people who have cancer or who develop cancer, at some point in their life or at the current point in their life, they have chronic constipation. We have to understand that constipation is a serious disease. It is not an issue. It is a disease. When you have chronic constipation, what are you doing? You're, stor you're storing toxic waste in your system, which is not meant to be in your system. And especially in women, when we find women who are constipated, what happens? Estrogen, which is supposed to be passed out, now gets backed up into your liver and then back into the cells of your body, producing estrogen-dominant cancers. So number one, we see estrogen dominance connected to constipation. It's common sense. You don't need to be a scientist, a nutritionist, or a doctor to know this. It goes back to school. If we keep toxic waste in our system, we have the, the ability to start off a mutation of cells. Anyway, let's move on to the next commonality, acidity. 
Almost every patient who has cancer, or forget about just cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular issues, obesity, all of these problems have highly acidic bodies. And it makes sense because when your body is acidic, you give it the environment for cancer cells to mutate, grow and spread. An acidic body allows a tumor to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. An acidic body provides the breeding ground for pathogens, bacteria, germs and viruses. That's another commonality that we see everywhere. So don't just run around making your body alkaline. Watch my video on the dangers of being too alkaline as well. The third commonality is low sleep, less sleep. And I cannot stress how important sleep is. It goes back to simple science again. What happens when we sleep? We produce a hormone called melatonin. Melatonin in the cancer world is also known as an anti-cancer hormone. Because while you sleep, if you have the right amount of melatonin, you can prevent your body, your immunity can prevent the proliferation of cancer cells. And we see this commonality in sick people, not just people with cancer, people with depression, diabetes, you name the condition and you can connect it with low sleep over the years. You cannot go against nature. Sleep is built into our bodies as a product of nature. If we don't have the right sleep, we have complications. And that's another commonality we've seen. The fourth one is emotional stress. And you know I'm big on this. I keep telling people the beauty in this data is almost every one of these cancer patients. I asked them one question, what was going on in your life? Six months to a year, maybe even two years before the cancer hit you because cancer just doesn't grow overnight. It's happening in your body six months to a year or maybe more in your body. And I get one answer, I ask everyone, what was going on in your life six months to one year before you had cancer? And 97% of them can relate to extreme emotional stress. I'm not talking about day-to-day -day stress. All of us have that. I'm not saying that if I'm stressed today, I'm going to get a cancer tomorrow. I'm talking about chronic emotional stress. And each one of these people could point out that stress factor in their life. Examples, for some of them it was a divorce. For some of them it was the loss of a loved one, the loss of a child, the loss of a parent, where they just can't get over that stress and that stress eats into them. Some of them it was property issues, some of them financial issues, some of them extreme self-esteem, self-confidence issues. It's beautiful, sad, but beautiful when you see that connection of emotional stress and triggers to the cause of disease. And no matter what anyone says, in the medical world about emotional stress, you know it yourself for sure. There's no one investing money in studying this further. And they're not interested. Where's the money if you find that the outcome of this research is true, that emotions have an impact on your disease? There's no money to be made by anyone, which is why the things that really work in this world will never be researched. There will be no government funding. There will be no private funding for things like this, unless you find someone who's willing to put that kind of money without expecting it back, without expecting profits. And then, but you have enough of people probably watching this video right now in, that, in the world who will state that when they change their emotions, their cancer went away. When they change their emotions, they got stronger and they healed their diabetes, their arthritis, whatever disease it is. These are the four main commonalities that we've seen in almost every cancer case in the last one year and in almost every cancer case that I see every single day. Now, the beauty of that is I've broken these points up into something else, a sedentary lifestyle. Because what happens when you have a sedentary lifestyle? When you have a sedentary lifestyle, you put on the wrong weight, you get acidic, you get constipated. When you're sedentary, you're obviously not motivated to move, which means you have some sort of emotional stress. So you see a connection between a sedentary lifestyle and the four commonalities. Low water intake. I can't tell you how many people, at least 95% of the people I see every single day, should never have required a consultation or should never have fallen sick if they had only taken care of their water intake. There are people having two to three glasses of water for the last couple of years. Without water, you have low immunity. Without water, you have acidity. Without water, you're constipated. Without water, your brain can't think and function the right way, which means you lose control of your thoughts and emotions and you're less powerful to handle the day-to-day -day stress that hits you. So again, you see the, the, the connection between low water intake and all the four commonalities. The fear and the ability for people to manifest the disease. 
I come across so many people who say, I don't want to get cancer. I'm so scared of getting cancer. I'm so scared of getting diabetes. I'm so, so scared of getting diseases. And again, in our diagnosis, we found that the very same people who have this intense fear manifest the disease. You are what you think. No matter what anyone tells you, if you think you're fat, you will be fat. You will look fat even though people say you are not fat. If you think you're sick, you will be sick. Your thoughts become who you are. It's as simple as that. I give everyone the simple test every time. Be angry right now. Be angry. Can you be angry? No, you cannot be angry. But now have an angry thought and you will feel anger. If I tell you to be happy right now, can you just be happy right now? No, you need a happy thought to make you happy, to make you feel happy. Every thought manifests into something in the human body. And it's true. Again, the diagnosis of so many patients, we see anger over the years. We see irritability. We see resentment. We see unforgiveness. We see jealousy. We see rigidity in thought processes. We see OCD properties at a very strong levels in all of these cases of cancer. Why? Because all of these emotions cause emotional stress. Emotional stress causes acidity, causes constipation, causes every commonality that we've discussed. So you see that connection again. The connection of food. When people start eating more raw food and less cooked food, they have the ability to boost their immunity. There's such a big connection between your nutrition and your food. But it is wrong for us today to say that only obese people would get cancer. Because I have thin people, I have obese people. I have people with six packs, I have people with size zero figures who get cancers as well. So you see, it's not just about weight. I know people who are obese and they have clean medical records. Absolutely no issues with diabetes, cholesterol, thyroid, nothing. And they are happy people. They're emotionally stable. They live life every day. They're happy. They're content. And I see thin people who have great bodies and they have every possible medical ailment in their parameters wrong. And that's because they're depressed. They're anxious. They're OCD. They have all of these, you know, um, emotional sicknesses, which is why I always say it's a mind-body connect. Do not just focus on the physical part of your body. You have to focus on the mental and emotional part as well. It's extremely, extremely important. And when we tie all of these things together, you have the ability to prevent cancer. Genetics, yes, like I said, genetics plays a role. But just because your parents have cancer or diabetes or cardiovascular, it does not mean you have to get the same thing. For people who have this fear, you must read this book. It's called The Biology of Belief. You have good genes and you have bad genes. If you create the wrong environment in your body and around you, your bad genes will express themselves. So even if you have a cancer gene or a diabetes gene or a cholesterol gene inherited from your parents, you need to create that bad environment in your body and around your body to make that gene become a disease. It is true. Your beliefs control your genes. Your environment inside of your body and outside of you controls your genes. Simple example, when you're staying, at, sitting, staying in a city, you feel a different way. The moment you move closer to nature, you go by a water body or a beach or a holiday somewhere, you feel different, you eat different, you think different, you sleep different. Because again, nature and an environment has a direct impact on every single gene in the human body. So now we can keep running around looking for superfoods and all of these things. There are people who recover without spending any money on superfoods. There are people who recover from cancer without doing anything. Focus on what's going on in your head and these four commonalities. If you have constipation, fix it. No matter what, fix it. Not the allopathic way. The allopathic way will suppress your symptom of constipation. Of course, you need the allopathy to help you through a journey. Take it. But do not believe it is curing your constipation. It is suppressing it. Acidity. Take an antacid if you need it to support your journey. But get off it because we all know the long-term side effects of antacid is destroying your gut. And weakening your gut is weakening your immunity. Having a weak immunity is causing a cancer. So look at natural remedies. There are plenty out there to reduce your acidity. Change your lifestyle. Change the way you eat, sleep, think and move. And you will control your acidity. Again, your antacid is only suppressing your acidity, it is not curing you. Sleep, that's a choice you have to make for yourself. How badly do you want to prevent disease? How badly do you want to heal? That's up to you. When you know 
When you desire that truly, you will make those lifestyle changes to have better sleep at night. And there are natural remedies that can help you sleep better at night. And the fourth point is, of course, emotional stress. Start doing the things you love, meditate, exercise, your hobbies, cut away from toxic people, dumb toxic relationships. I know it's easy for me to sit here and tell you that. I struggle with my own level of toxicity too, but we got to keep on trying every single day. We can't say, oh, this is my position in life and I have to accept it. Also then, accept the consequences of your decision. If you really want something, you've got to rise above and get what you really want. You've got to make those lifestyle changes because I, I'll tell you one thing, no one no one is responsible for your health but you. No one cares about your health as much as you would want to. So take accountability, take responsibility, no matter what it takes, make those lifestyle changes. And I can promise you, I can promise you, many, many people will not have to suffer from cancer if they get these basics right. Because these are commonalities that we've seen in every single cancer patient. Have a good evening, everyone. If you know people who are suffering from cancer, if you want to prevent it, share this as much as you can because there are four things which don't require money. They don't require money to fix. It only requires your own motivation that comes from within, the want to do it, and making these simple lifestyle changes to do it. Have a good evening, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.